In this video, I'd like to talk about how to interpret parabolas in context. So we're going to be given these word problems where you have a graph of your parabola and we need to answer a question about it. So let's just jump right into these. Mia kicked a football. The function f models the height of the ball above the ground in meters as a function of time in seconds. So it's height for our function and it's time for our independent variable. And you're going to see this type of graph pretty much anytime you have projectile motion. So if you've learned this in physics, when you throw a ball or shoot a cannon or throw anything through the air, it's going to travel in pretty much a perfect parabola, but not exactly because of air resistance. So actually in these types of problems, we're going to assume that there's no air because if there was air, it would um, push the ball down and it would land a little bit sooner. Now at lower speeds, this isn't that dramatic, but the higher the speed, the more dramatic this effect is because of wind resistance. So if you threw a ball on the moon though, where there is no atmosphere, there is no air, it would travel in a perfect parabola, just like you see here. So anytime you have projectile motion, you're going to see this type of curve. And we need to plot the point on the graph of F that corresponds to when the ball hit the ground. So at zero seconds, that's when she kicks the ball. And then as time goes on, it looks like two seconds, that the ball will reach a maximum height of 20 meters. And then as time continues, the ball starts dropping down. So the ball is going to go up in the air and then start falling and at a height of zero, so that's when it hits the ground. Height would be zero, so h I've decided to call the height here. And at a height of zero, so that's our x-axis here, and that would be at four seconds. So four seconds is our answer. That's how long it took for the ball to hit the ground. So we actually, on the Khan Academy, this would be an interactive graph. That's why this point is kind of in the middle here, because you get to choose where this point goes. And so you would move this point down to here on your graph, and that should be the final answer. Now let's keep going on these. We're going to do several more. So Sophie opens a new restaurant. The function f models the restaurant's net worth in thousands of dollars as a function of time in months after Sophie opens it. So with all these problems, you want to familiarize yourself with the variables. So our x-axis here, this is time. And specifically, it's time in months since she opened the restaurant. And our vertical axes, that's our net worth. So that's how much money the business is in thousands of dollars. So it looks like at zero months, she opens the restaurant and you start a fair amount in debt anytime you open a restaurant or usually when you start a new business. And then as time goes on, you can see that she actually loses more money. And this seems to be her minimum right here. So at two months, she reaches a minimum of minus $12,000 for her net worth. And then after that, it starts going up and up. So it looks at six months that she finally breaks even. That's when her net worth is zero. And then every month after that, she's just making money. So in reality, this part of the graph isn't part of reality. It's just an extension of this curve, this model that roughly fits what's going on for Sophie. So now we can answer the question. And basically, my general strategy is to define the variables. And then I like to think about the graph in my own words. So I look at all the distinct points, the intercepts, the maximums, the minimums. And I ask myself, what does it actually mean? What are the numbers telling me at those points? And once I've familiarized myself with the graph, then I can go to the question. So plot the point on the graph of F that corresponds to the restaurant's minimum net worth. And usually when you do this analysis, you're probably going to come across the question and answer it along the way, which we did. The minimum net worth, the bottom of our curve here, was at two months in and she was at a negative $12,000 loss. And so you would drag this green point right here and just plot it right there. So that should be the final answer for this one. And again, we'll just keep moving. 
So Michael starts a new paper company. The function f models the company's net worth. Again, it's in thousands of dollars. As a function of time in months after Michael starts it. So this is very similar to the last question. And a company is in debt if its net worth is negative. So let's look at the, the graph here. And it looks like he actually starts at zero months with a positive net worth. And then over time, it looks like by two months in, his net worth is down to zero. And then it just starts going more and more negative until about eight months in, it looks like it reaches a minimum value around minus 9,000. And then after that, it starts making money again. And so by 14 months in, Michael would have a net worth of $0 again, but this time his net worth is increasing. And by 16 months, he's already much higher than he was when he started. Actually, I should rephrase that. At 16 months, he was right where he started. And any time after that, he was above where he started. So we need to plot the point on the graph that corresponds to the first time after six months at which the company is no longer in debt. So we're looking after six months. So I'm going to draw in this barrier. And we're looking to the right of that because we're looking after six months. And we want to know when is the first time that the company is no longer in debt. So that's the net worth of $0 or greater. And that would be right here. 14 months in, that's where he breaks even again. And then everything after four, 14 months is profit. So this green point, you'd have to drag to this point right here. And let's do one more of these. So in this case, Josie throws a stone off a bridge into a river. The function f models the stone's height in meters. So height in meters above the water as a function of time in seconds after Josie throws it. So we've got this projectile motion again. She's throwing something. So it's going to travel in this parabolic arc here. And technically, if there was wind, it would probably look maybe more like this or something close to that. But in these problems, because this is a perfect parabola, we're just assuming that there is no air, even though they don't mention it. And really, you don't need that bit of information. This isn't a physics question. You just need to be able to interpret the graph that you were given. But just to add a little bit more context, uh, that's why I mentioned that. So let's analyze this graph. So it looks like at zero seconds, that's when she's about to throw it, that she's starting 25 meters above the ground level, or I should say above the river level. So she's throwing a stone off a bridge. So it looks like the bridge is 25 meters above the river. And it also looks like she throws it upward because at, this looks to be about two seconds in, it reaches a maximum height of 45 meters and then gradually starts to fall. And then by five seconds, that's when the height is zero. That's when the stone actually hits the river. So we need to plot the point on the graph that corresponds to the height above the water from which Josie threw the stone. So basically they're asking, where did she start throwing the stone? What was the height which she threw the stone? So in other words, before she threw the stone or right when she was throwing the stone, this is at zero seconds in. So our time is equal to zero. So we find a zero value for time and that brings us up to this 25 meters. So we just drag this point right here. Since at time zero, this is her starting height, which means that's the height of the bridge above the river. 